Good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing today in this beautiful evening? August 29th, day 270 of my everyday journey. It's Christine Trainer talking to you la talking to you <laughs> from New Westminster, British Columbia, Canada. I'm so happy to be here and to send you my love and to share with you today. Welcome. So what can I talk about today that I haven't talked about, sorry guys, you know, this past 270 days. And I've talked about a variety of different things, right? And actually today is about the third or fourth time I try and do this video, so I'm having some issues today, but I'm getting there. But this is what I want to talk about today. It's all about the people who've influenced you through your whole life or the people who are influencing you now, who love you and care for you and help you and encourage you and help you enrich your life to help you become a more successful person in all avenues of your life, especially in your personal and workaday life. And I, I, I talk about this today because, believe it or not, my life has changed dramatically really well this past year. I've had a wonderful wide range of wonderful people who have influenced me. The first few people have influenced me this past year because it's been a year since I've been doing online marketing are the beautiful people I work with. With my, my, my community, I'm, my beautiful work community I'm doing at the moment, these beautiful people that surround me on a daily basis, especially when I do my beautiful work class with them. And it's a truly lovely bunch of people who've actually encouraged me to continue to move forward and do other things in my life to, to expand my, my, my knowledge and things I want to do. It's a beautiful community and through these beautiful people, they've helped me be happy for who I am inside. So that's good to have somebody who's going to be a wonderful influence. And the second, the third people are people I've known along the way this past month. My beautiful friend Nadia Zubarati, a beautiful mentor. I do find her just truly wonderful encourager. She encourages me every day with her beautiful posts and her messages and what she does every day of her life to, as, she, as, she, as she has become more successful in her direct marketing. And of course, Mr. Mark Lalonde, a beautiful Canadian a uh, seven-figure earner who, with all his beautiful knowledge and uh, his webinars and things that he's done this past year that I've seen and, and spoken to him, I have learned so much. And it's really helped me encourage go further in my life. But the first true real person that became more of an influence in my life, of course, is my father, Victor Norcos. He's the one that encouraged me to carry on and move forward in my life with all I do. And the reason why I talk about him today is because I'm gonna give you a short little history. My father, Victor Norquis, was born in Winnipeg, Manitoba, 1933. And he lived there for quite a few years until he and his family moved to Vancouver. He had a very pretty good family life. He had some issues. And when he was quite young, maybe 16, I think he was 16 years old, he was able to go into the armed forces. So he started really young in the armed forces and he became an aircraft engineer. And even then when I found out what my father had done, I was truly amazed and inspired by him then. And then of course in 1957, he met my mom, Joan. Uh, they, they got married within a few months or I suppose maybe a few weeks, I'm not sure. And nine months later, my sister came along and then two years later, I came along. And that's what happened in my life. I was very quickly, I was born in 1960 in Vancouver because my dad moved to Vancouver when he was young. And I was born in here, but my dad was in the armed forces, so they were transferred to Ontario. So I was raised for 18 years back, no, 17 years back in Ontario. And my life was different then, you see. Uh, my father was a hard working man. We lived on the base for about a few years. And then he finally, I think he wanted to just leave the armed forces and carry on and do something better for his life. He wanted to have us we, he wanted to have us to have a life outside of the armed forces he wanted to ex expand you know so what he did was he ended up leaving the base in Trenton and he got a little place uh, I think it was a apartment in a house I'm not sure exactly what it was I, f I forgot a little bit but I remember it was half of a house the apartment was and I remember this he and my mom got a, a cafe he leased a cafe and for a couple of years he was running a cafe which was kind of fun because my sister and I really helped helped out we had a ball and then after that he wanted to do even more so we bought uh, there was a there was a, the highway one between Brighton and Ontario my father decided that we were he wanted to get a little gas station with a garage and a, a store and a house with a three-quarter acre back 
the backyard and a lovely little forest in the meadow and he decided he wanted to be there. He wanted to, to, to run the business. So that's what he did. And we were there for, let's see, uh, I think for a few years, I think till I was 16. And it was a wonderful place to be, but it was also a hard life because my father worked hard to run the business well. And he did, he worked very hard. He also, because he, because of his years of being an aircraft engineer, he was able to fix cars. And he had, a, in the side of the garage, he was also, the garage part of his gas station was a garage. And so he actually fixed cars as well. So he was a hard working man. He did his best to take good care of us. He made Christmases wonderful. He was, always doing things to help us out. He was always making sure that my sister and I had a happy life and he took good care of my mom. Because my mom, when she wasn't too ill, she would help run the business. And it was good for a while. Until things started to slow down when the business, the, the highway was slowing down. There, there was nobody driving back and forth and it was really hard. And he noticed his business was really almost slowing down to a halt. So my dad was a little frustrated. He ended up, you know, when they had papers and you could you be the one that to distribute the papers to where you're supposed to go. My dad was also doing that with the Global Mail. He had his truck, and in the evenings, he would take the bundles of papers, take it to the, their destinations, and then he'd come home. And he did that. He did that at nighttime, and then during the day, he was work, He was running his gas station. He did that every day for a couple of years. And he worked really hard. So I do believe one year I was, through the help of my dad, I was doing a paper route as well for him. And I remember one summer... I, my dad would always pick me up. And I remember one summer, my dad didn't make it. He didn't make it to pick me up. And a friend of his came to pick me up. And I said, what's going on? And my dad, he, they said, your dad had an accident. He was so tired. He almost, he fell asleep. He ran right into a pole. Thought, oh, my God. Got a bit of a stitches up there. But he was doing okay. Um, he was in the hospital a couple of days. Somebody helped run the gas station. Before you know it, dad was right back running the gas station. He did deliver those papers for a while. But then he stopped because he realized it was not, it was taking its toll on his health. All to take care of me. He was a hard-working man. His drive was fantastic. His perseverance, his strength every single day. But sadly, of course, in the end, the uh, the gas station folded and uh, closed down because there was no business on the highway and my dad ended up going bankrupt. But that didn't stop him from helping to give us a good life because he realized that was just part of our life. And so we started all over again. We got you know, in the end, uh, they, they took away everything, but we ended up starting all over again. We moved to Brighton. Dad got an apartment. We got, my dad rented an apartment. We lived there for a while, uh, from 16 on till I was 19. And my dad took a bunch of odd jobs on. He was a, um, what you call a, a pizza delivery man. Did anything to help keep us in tow. And he, we did pretty good. Dad was pretty steady because he also could work on cars. He also could work on aircraft. He was an aircraft engineer. He didn't mind delivering the pizzas because the pizzas were tasty. <laughs> and he, I was really proud of my father because he worked hard, he persevered, he was very strong and he helped take care of us. And then, uh, sadly enough, of course, back here in Vancouver, my, my grandmother, my dad's mom passed away. So we moved, when I was 19, we moved back here to Vancouver and we've lived here ever since. And I know these during these last 40 years of being in Vancouver, my father persevered, had great strength and resilience with any obstacle he encountered, including the, especially the years my mother started to get really ill. And he stood by her side, loving her, taking care of her till she died 11 years ago. And now my father's 86, he's very happy, he's living a beautiful full life with a lovely lady, a new lovely lady by his side, uh, east of me in atmosphere, a beautiful house where he's busy every day, he has a beautiful garden, he keeps his life busy even at the age of 86. And he's happy. And that's why I want to talk about him today because he was my number one, my first inspiration in my life because believe it or not, I love my father Victor dearly. He taught me to be strong when there was when there are obstacles in my way to never give up, stay steady and resilient each day of my life. And so what I want to talk about today, the people, my father who influenced my life every day. And I'm talking to you guys, who do you, who inspires you in your life? Who helps you carry on and be strong? Who in your past to this day helped you be strong and resilient and gives you the strength to prosper and to be strong and resilient every day of your life? Be awesome to, for me to find out. So I just wanted to let, talk to you guys about this today. This is my little, little, little subject. So as you see my sweetie in the background, he's one of my newer He's one of my newer inspirations as well because with Masood struggling every day, keeping strong and looking after us, he does his best to take care of us. But my number one inspiration was my father, Victor, because he 
was resilient, he was strong, he persevered for all the years of his life, even when life was a little bit harder when I was young, but we did it, he did it, and that's what makes me stronger and more resilient, as I persevere each day of my life. So that's what I want to talk about today. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. It was hard for me to talk about because this is something that's dear to my heart. Didn't mold well on Facebook, not a whole lot of people read it. Maybe because it was a bit of a long little story. People sometimes don't like to read long stories, but I figured I'd talk about it today on my everyday journey, day 270. So give me a thumbs up again if you enjoyed this. Pardon me. Uh, as I like to always say, me today, great day, everyday journey. And I hope the people that inspired you in your everyday life help keep you going, strong and persevering. I'll see you tomorrow on day 271 in my everyday journey. I love to you all. Bye.